Okay, everybody, we are going to make a bit of cloth unravel from a rolled up position. So I've just got a default uh, file open right now. Get rid of the cube for now. We're going to bring in our flag. Now I've got uh, a Canadian flag and I have an Icelandic flag. So we'll decide a little later which one we want to use. Best thing to do, in my opinion, is to drag them into the scene like this and they'll be used later for texturing. Okay. So shift A to add a plane, and this is going to be our flag. So tab into it. Let's uh, scale on the Y, like so. Hit S for scale and Y for Y. All right, let's go into shading while well, we've got that selected, like so. And we'll just hit new right here, and then down inside of this grid area, just shift A, go to texture and image texture. Bam, just like that. And then inside of here are our images. So they will show up on our plane here. We just plug in the color to the base color. Now it's off, no worries. Control T with Node Wrangler installed. And uh, we're going to map this correctly. So we want to change the Z rotation minus 90 so it faces me. And to be honest, that's actually looking pretty good as the Canadian flag. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've got the scale of the Y just right from the get-go. Okay, so now that we've got our 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 image onto our our plane, we need to turn this into a piece of cloth. Super simple. Um, tab out of edit mode, like so, and we're going to head into the uh, tab on the right hand side for physics properties. Hit cloth and then um, we're going to change this to a cotton. So there's presets over here in uh, in this list here. You can put denim, leather, rubber, silk. We're going to go with cotton. Just a nice, a nice light uh, cloth. If we we want to see our physics simulation happen, so you hit play, and it just drops out of sight. No problem. We can fix this really fast. So the easiest way to fix this is to tab back into this, select everything. And then we're going to go control. We didn't have to select everything, actually, come to think of it. But I usually do. I just select everything, control R, and we're going to make a bunch of cuts here, essentially subdivisions just in one direction. A bunch. We're going to, I want this thing to be pretty cool. And uh, yeah, left click to make that stick. And so now we've got the Canadian flag with a whole bunch of subdivisions in it. So it's going to roll. Now, what we want to do is we want to pin one of these corners because it's going to roll out. So we're going to pin this vertice and this vertice here. And to do that, we head over into the um, vertex group uh, panel here, which uh, object data properties of vertex groups is right here. Hit plus. We're going to call this pin group. And then hit assign. And what that'll do and if we deselect, we can see that nothing is selected. And if we pin, select pin group, hit select, it's going to reselect these two vertices. And what this is going to do is it's going to pin these two right where they live. So if we hit play again, which is the space bar, nothing happens because we need to set the pin group for the, um, for the cloth, which is down here in shape. And inside of shape is a pin group. So we're going to select our pin group, the thing we labeled pin group and hit play. Now you can see that our flag just falls down and starts to wave in the no wind. Just waving due to gravity. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, just falls like that. So now what we want to do is we want to make it twirl outwards as if it was sort of wrapped up in, um, in, a, in a wrap in a circle, you know, like a newspaper would be or something like that. Somebody's just rolled it up like a maybe like a sleeping bag or like a like a flag. Okay, so first thing we want to do for this is uh, hit Shift A, and we're going to add in a curve. Now I've got extra curves um, in my list here, so I can hit Curve Spiles and just go into the uh, preferences and add-ons, and then add in anything that says curve. And I'm going to hit Archimedean. Now I'll show you the difference. There's only two. If we open up this panel down here. And uh, there's two different types of curves we could use, an Archimedean or a logarithmic. 
Now, I personally prefer the Archimedean, but you can choose either one. And we'll take a look here. We're going to add a bunch of turns. Let's put, I don't know, let's put maybe six or five. It's not that big of a flag. And then our radius growth. We can up that. And what that'll do is that'll give us our, what the radius should be in growth. And this is a pretty big, so pretty big circle. Here. So let's, let's bring this way down to, I don't know, something that I think is going to be appropriate for this flag, something like that. And this is where we want to set all of our stuff. So don't go away from this. Don't click away. Don't do anything. Let's put, let's put six steps to 24 is fine. Radius growth looks pretty good for a flag and we don't want to mess with height. Now I'll show you the difference between Archimedean and logarithmic. If we put logarithmic, and we, we can mess with the expansion force. You see how in the middle it's much closer, but the outside is much further. So you can have this kind of look where you sort of wrap something up and the outside is a little looser than the inside uh, kind of idea. But again, we're just going to go for the basics, the Archimedean, and that gives us our curve that we are going to wrap our flag on. Okay, so click away from that. We're good. Hit tab to come back into object mode. We've got our curve still selected, so we're going to rotate it on the X of 90. Sorry, no. <laughs> the Y of 90. Rotate Y 90. And um, we can then see that we've got our uh, spiral, but it's facing the wrong direction because we want the flag to roll down to the right. So it's going to be all wrapped up and it's going to roll outwards. So to fix that, we're just going to go R X 180 and then R Z 180. Okay. And that should be about right. So that you can see that our top edge, this edge here, this left edge is going to be at the top here and the rest will be rolled up so that when it rolls outwards, it'll roll downwards. Okay. So next thing we want to do is select our plane, go into modifiers and add a curve modifier, select our spiral and then change the deform axis to minus Y. In this case, we're using minus Y because uh, I'm on the Y axis here. So if we move our plane around, G, Y, you can see that it starts to kind of ravel around and stuff like that. And right now it's sort of intersecting itself because the spiral is just too big kind of idea. So, but it is wrapping up. We are getting the effect that we want. Probably like that, right? Okay. So we've got too much spiral, that's for darn sure. So what we can do is we can go into our spiral and we can see where it's kind of going. So we'll hit C and we'll just start selecting um, vertices that we can delete. And we want to kind of end on something that we know we're going to uh, need later. Enter X, delete the vertices, and we might start deleting them from the inside actually, because what we're going to do uh, let's delete some of these from the inside. We'll end off sort of where it already ends off. X, delete. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. All right, so hit three to go sideways. And we're going to grab this vertice here. We're going to hit G. But we want it to actually, so hit escape first. We want it to move the others as well. So up here, we will we'll select the um, connected only for moving moving vertices around with um, proportional editing on. Okay, so hit G and this big huge circle is going to give, it's going to be the influence of what we're moving things. So if I make it really small, then I'm only moving the one, but I want to move a few. So we'll just move over this way and then actually we'll just move it a little bit more down, something like that. And then this one can come over. Let's make this clean. Something like that, and then G, make our influence a little bit bigger. Something like that, because it's going to sit on a ledge here. All right, so tab out of that, come over to here, and grab our flag and move it on the Y. Something like that. You see how it's moving with that curve. Check this out. So you see we have way too many spirals here. But what we can do, actually, is just scale this down 
and we can have more curves in our flag. So we'll go back to here. Actually, let's shade smooth this thing because it looks kind of weird. G, Y, wrap our flag back up into its curve just a little like, like that. Okay, so the top edge is going to sit on top of uh, a cube. So shift A, uh, add in a mesh, a cur or cube, I mean, and um, bring it down to kind of where we want it to be. So our flag is going to come off of our cube. So G, X, hit three. And we just want to get this really cool. I'm just scrolling in and uh, G, Z, bring this down. You know what we might do actually? We might just take this edge here. So we'll tab into this, select this edge, hit two, select the edge and then control B and we'll bevel it. Something like that. That kind of looks good. Okay, tab out of that. Uh, hit three, G, and we'll just move it up to sit there. Now, right now, we have our flag set up to spiral outwards, or it should spiral outwards when physics takes effects. We can, we can check that in a second. Um, and we want it to come off the cube. So if we hit play now, it goes nuts. All right, so that's no problem. Don't worry, check us out. First thing we need to do, select our flag, grab your curve, chuck it above the cloth in the modifiers. And we'll hit play again, and it goes down. But we have a second problem. It's not touching the cube. So bring this back to first frame, reset our sim, go to our cube, add a collision uh, physics property, and there's nothing to do, and hit play again. Bam, there we go. Our flag rolls down and off the edge where it sticks because of our vertex group that makes it stick, and it just unrolls. Now, the other thing that's happening, if we look at this carefully, one more thing. Look at this. What is happening here? That's not how flags unroll. So the way we fix that, just take our sim back to the beginning, hit our plane, go into the collisions for our physics uh, of the cloth, and click self collisions and then hit play again and it just unrolls ever so nicely and that is how you make cloth unroll inside of blender all right that's it for this one hopefully that's been interesting and useful for you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one